Obama lashed out at Donald Trump in a press conference in the wake of the Orlando terror attack. Let's watch. For a while now, the main contribution of some of my friends on the other side of the aisle have made in the fight against ISIL is to criticize this administration and me for not using the phrase radical Islam. That's the key, they tell us. We can't beat ISIL unless we call them radical Islamists. What exactly would using this label accomplish? What exactly would it change? Would it make ISIL less committed to trying to kill Americans? Would it bring in more allies? Is there a military strategy that is served by this? The answer is none of the above. Calling a threat by a different name does not make it go away. This is a political distraction. There's not been a moment in my seven and a half years as president where we have not been able to pursue a strategy because we didn't use the label radical Islam. Not once has an advisor of mine said, man, if we really use that phrase, we're going to turn this whole thing around. Not once. So if someone seriously th thinks that we don't know who we're fighting, if there's anyone out there who thinks we're confused about who our enemies are, that would come as a surprise to the thousands of terrorists who we've taken off the battlefield. So, look, on this portion, I I'm actually not with Obama, because whether or not he realizes it, he comes across as being evasive and being politically correct, where uh, the idea that using the term radical Islam is generalizing about all Muslims is something that I don't think is true. So, and, and he goes on to explain that that's actually why he doesn't use the term, is that uh, he doesn't want to demonize an entire faith, and he doesn't want to turn people against us who should be uh, with us in this war on terror. And the response to that, people have said this, and I think they're right to point this out, is really you using the wrong terminology is going to make somebody who's otherwise peaceful all of a sudden start doing jihad? That's not really an argument that they're moderate to begin with. Now, is it? So, it... It really comes across as you're walking on eggshells, you're being politically correct, and most importantly, you're just not willing to be truthful about this, that there is a strain within Islam that is radical, that is fundamentalist, and, uh, you know, they are your enemy. Now, I think he's right when he says, hey, uh, of course we know who we're going after. Yeah, you kind of do, except when you end up arming Islamists and jihadists and your buddy-buddy with Saudi Arabia, who is ISIS that made it, and you're, you de facto align with them to fight Assad in Syria. But outside of that, yeah, you get it that ISIS is bad and Al-Qaeda is bad and all that stuff. But the terminology matters. And when Trump goes out there and he makes the argument that, of course I'm gonna keep you safe and they're not because they can't even say the words. They, they don't even know who they're fighting because they can't even say the words. I think that argument resonates, man. And I think when you dance around that, people go, yeah, why are you being evasive? Why are you being politically correct? You can't even say uh, who we're fighting. And again, the problem with Donald Trump is not that he uses the phrase radical Islam. The problem with Donald Trump is that he wants to ban all Muslims from entering the United States. That's the problem with Donald Trump. And it's not that somebody who uses the term radical Islam, by definition, wants to ban all Muslims entering the United States. No. It just so happens that Donald Trump does. So that's the problem with him. His policies suck. The idea of banning all Muslims. The idea of let's attack the families of terrorists in the Middle East. So go after women and children. That is terrorism. 
That's the problem with Donald Trump. Not that he uses the phrase radical Islam. So you got you got to stop being like oversensitive about that term. It's not you're not generalizing even though you fear like you are. So you're not helping yourself by doubling down on this. Okay? So I'm against him in this first part. I am. But now let's get to the second part and see if he starts making more sense. We now have proposals from the presumptive Republican nominee for president of the United States to bar all Muslims from emigrating to America. We hear language that singles out immigrants and suggests entire religious communities are complicit in violence. Where does this stop? We've heard these suggestions during the course of this campaign. Do Republican officials actually agree with this? Because that's not the America we want. It doesn't reflect our democratic ideals. It won't make us more safe, it will make us less safe fueling ISIL's notion that the West hates Muslims, making young Muslims in this country and around the world feel like no matter what they do, they're going to be under suspicion and under attack. It makes Muslim Americans feel like their government is betraying them. It betrays the very values America stands for. We've gone through moments in our history before when we acted out of fear, and we came to regret it. We've seen our government mistreat our fellow citizens. And it has been a shameful part of our history. This is a country founded on basic freedoms, including freedom of religion. We don't have religious tests here. Our founders, our Constitution, our Bill of Rights are clear about that. And if we ever abandon those values, we would not only make it a lot easier to radicalize people here and around the world, but we would have betrayed the very things we are trying to protect. The pluralism and the openness, our rule of law, our civil liberties, the very things that make this country great, the very things that make us exceptional. And then the terrorists would have won. And we cannot let that happen. I will not let that happen. On this part, he's 100% right. Now, to be uh, totally accurate here and get all the facts out there, it's hard to take a, a civil liberties lecture seriously from a guy who increased NSA spying. That's what Obama did. A guy who uh, just backed off of shutting down Guantanamo Bay. Saying, yeah, we're not. We're actually done trying to shut that thing down. Mm, you ranting on civil liberties is a little hypocritical. Uh, this is also the guy who uh, has American citizens on kill lists. If you really believe in the Constitution, if you really believe in human rights, you would know that American citizens get a fucking trial. There's this thing called due process. So again, hard to take it seriously when you rant about civil liberties and you've killed American citizens in drone strikes without a trial. You didn't even try them in absentia, which you could have done. We have This is a guy who has a drone program that 90% gets the wrong people. So all of these facts are necessary to bring up because it is, on some level, absolutely preposterous that now all of a sudden he goes out there and acts like a civil liberties champion. But having said that, based solely on the rhetoric there, he's right. So 
the idea that we should ban all Muslims entering the United States, well, that's the problem. The problem is not that Donald Trump says radical Islam. That's a totally fine term, and you're not generalizing when you say radical Islam. The problem is that he says all Muslims will be banned from entering the United States. So that means he's utterly clueless and ignorant about the different strains of Islam and what they mean and the fact that Ahmadi Muslims are totally peaceful and Sufi Muslims are totally peaceful and there are many, many, many uh, Shia Muslims, Sunni Muslims who are totally peaceful. This idea that the Salafi jihadist or Wahhabi uh, mindset and strain of Islam represents all Muslims is stupid and that is what Donald Trump believes. He does generalize about them. He is a fucking bigot. So that's the problem. You should have focused on that the whole time. President Obama. That's what you should have focused on. That he wants to ban all Muslims and this is bigotry, this is xenophobia, that is wrong. Not the thing about radical Islam because you lose people when you start tap dancing around using a term that's not a crazy term or an inaccurate term. Uh, and then he says, look, you're setting up an us versus them thing here. When you say we're going to ban all Muslims from entering the U.S., when you say we're going to do special surveillance for them, which is something Trump has said before, well, then you are setting up an us versus them mentality. And it is a binary worldview, and you are saying, hey, fucking pick sides. Well, that's a horrible position to be in when you're somebody who is an American Muslim who has reconciled their, their own interpretation of Islam, their own Islamic ideology with uh, modernity and Western civilization. And there are many of them. If you look at, for example, the majority of American Muslims in... Um, is it Dearborn, Michigan? I think it's Dearborn, Michigan. Voted for Bernie Sanders. <laughs> so that, I mean, that busts up a thousand stereotypes right there alone. That, oh, they're all anti-Semitic. Oh, they're all massively conservative. There are more American Muslims believe in gay marriage than Protestants in America. So this idea of like, it's impossible to reconcile the two. No, there are many that have a, a, a liberal interpretation. Now, you can argue, hey, they blow off parts of the holy book. I'm sure some of them do. Or you could argue they just cherry-pick the good parts. But bottom line is, they're wholly American. They're just as American as you are. And Donald Trump does want to generalize about them. And he is setting up a binary thing where it's us versus them. And then I love that he goes on to allude to Japanese internment. Hey, we've acted out of fear before. Now we all look back at that and go, that was fucking dumb. That was just absolutely ridiculous. We're going to lock up all... Japanese Americans because of what happened at Pearl Harbor. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. And this is the kind of stuff that Donald Trump is hinting at. And then the most important point, and this is a point that I've made myself over and over. Again, coming from Obama, the source is questionable because he's done seven interventions, so he's by no means a liberal lion. But he makes the point that, hey, idiots, you can't uphold liberal values and secularism uh, by violating liberal values. You don't get to say, I'm the, we are the kings of liberal values and human rights as you act illiberally and you act against human rights. Because that's then, then you're just a fucking hypocrite. You're just a hypocrite if you do that. And this is something that we've seen a lot, unfortunately. So is it true that in the West, domestically, we're massively uh, ahead of fundamentalist religious cultures, including I Islam? Absolutely. I mean, the way we treat gays, the openness for women, so on and so forth, it's light years ahead. But then you don't get to say, hey, we have, uh, you know, we have a monopoly on liberal values as, for example, you're an imperialist country <laughs> and you're doing seven interventions right now and you just did the Iraq war where you killed hundreds of thousands of civilians and your drone program kills 90% the wrong people. You don't get to say, hey, we've cornered the market on liberal values and human rights, and that's why we're so much better than them, when in some ways, specifically with foreign policy, you're acting the opposite. And now Donald Trump wants to make it so that uh, on domestic policy, we act the opposite too, where he's like, religious freedom, my ass. I, I don't want to, I'm going to ban all Muslims from entering the country. Kiss your religious freedom goodbye. So then, again, you don't get to say you're upholding civilization as you violate one of the cornerstones of civilization, which is free expression, free press, free thought, freedom of religion. And this is a guy, Donald Trump, who just literally bans all the, all the press outlets that he doesn't like from his events. He just did it with the Washington Post. And it's not just liberal outlets he does it with, too. He did it with National Review, a right-wing outlet. 
So here's a guy who says he's upholding freedom and human rights and liberal values. And then meanwhile, he's, he's massively against the First Amendment, says he's going to, uh, you know, open up the libel laws to sue people that he disagrees with. He sued Bill Maher over a joke. He sued The Onion over a joke. He doesn't believe in the First Amendment. He doesn't believe in freedom of religion. If the religion is one that he deems is the wrong one, even if you're somebody who's a good person from the re that religion, he doesn't care. He doesn't fucking care. So he's a m massive walking contradiction. I, I'm upholding civilization and human rights as I violate that which makes modern civilization and human rights. No, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. So, I don't think Obama was right in the first part where he goes on and on about radical Islam and, oh, this is why we shouldn't use the term, yada yada. No, you do come across as too politically correct there, and you are being too politically correct there. But I am with him when he starts going in on, uh, you know, our freedoms in the West, and that's what makes us great, and you want to violate that while still saying we're great. But no, if you violate that, then you're making us, by definition, not great. So, I love the second part of it, didn't like the first part of it. But overall, yeah, he's going after him hard here, and this is something that, you know, Hillary Clinton needs to take note of if she wants to be the next president. You can't do this, you know... Uh, uh, cliches and platitudes like she's been doing in her ads and not hitting them hard. No, you really gotta go after him with a fucking sledgehammer if you wanna make a dent. If you don't do that, then he's gonna run roughshod over you.